it's really the symbiotic relationship between the plants kingdom and humans it's amazing so and really there is no good explanation for that and uh, it's puzzling how many plants contain DMT and I can only refer here to Dennis McKenna thoughts probably he can tell it firsthand that uh, first of all DMT can be synthesized in very few steps and fewer steps you need for synthesis the more widespread that compound can be in nature and second that uh, DMT can be metabolized in animals to a growth hormone so and uh, it can pass with the urine so the plant kingdom will get back DMT in a growth hormone form but I think this is just a very thin aspect you know of this symbiotic relationship probably is much more richer and it's it's really puzzling what I am pretty much interested in why is it that in the Amazon uh, in the Amazon basin most of the ayahuascaros or the shamans who use ayahuasca they say that they get their wisdom their teachings from the plants and I have to tell you I take it very seriously what the aboriginals they say about what they are doing I don't like that western approach when we go over there and we explain what they are doing for what reason I think it's better to take on face value, value or how they are explaining what they are doing and then we can translate it to our language so it's pretty commonly held in the Amazon basin that uh, information can be gained from plants and I feel I, I am aware that it sounds outlandish, but it's probably true and probably conscious, some sort of consciousness can be attributed to plants. But I have to stop here. Their consciousness, if we accept this idea, is totally different from the consciousness what a brain can process using neuroaxonal system, the nerve cells and the nerve fibers if we wish to understand how plants can carry some sort of consciousness then we have to understand that probably the human conscious experience is not related only to one network neuroscience i think totally got stuck to studying one network the neuroaxonal nerve cells and nerve fibers and we are just at the very beginning realizing that there are other networks within the brain and below the neuroaxonal level. Here I can refer to Stuart Hamerov's excellent model, which is model yet, experimental proof is waiting yet, that we have networks uh, on a subcellular level, the so-called cytoskeletal system. We have microtubuli and microfilaments within nerves which can provide us with a much broader and probably more complex network that even the very complex neuroaxonal system can provide us and what is most important that because the size of these sub neural networks is close to the quantum size very probably they can do quantum processing and with the help of quantum computation and the non-local correlations it's possible that a subcellular cytoskeletal network can function as a quantum hologram we know a hologram can be very detailed or can be less detailed probably the human brain itself is not big enough to have a very detailed quantum hologram of the universe but it can hold some sort of it but if you imagine a huge network of mushroom mycelia and we know about mushrooms we 
which has the same DNA and their mycelial size can reach uh, square miles. You can, and if we suppose that uh, this kind of mycelia network can process information, and one of the eminent mycologists, Paul Stamets, says this way, yes, mycelia can process information. Then possibly, so probably it's easier to accept that idea that if some sort of information processing is going on there, then uh, we face some sort of consciousness different than ours. But, and this is one miracle of nature, that we can tap into that. So while we are mostly using our neuroaxonal network, or as I said before, that in integrated altered state of consciousness, we s switch to a different mode, and probably then we are switching to use our own cytoskeletal network. So probably with the help of that kind of uh, uh, functioning, we can tap into the functioning of uh, this plant consciousness. Plants cannot talk to us in language, in a symbolic way, because they don't have this neuroaxonal system. But possibly, they have these uh, monocle correlations. Oh, <laughs> was it very steep? <laughs> oh, my oh, God. That's good. No, <laughs>